Three, two, one. All right. Um, now we're back. Uh, now we're going to proceed with Mr. Benji Agleam's Advanced Airway Management. And take it away, sir. Hello. Uh, good evening from uh, Conroe, Texas, and also our friends as far away as Saudi Arabia, Singapore, and also in Philippines, which is uh, now in the morning of... Uh, of Sunday. So I'm very fortunate to uh, able to work for the past 29 years for um, uh, a, a trauma, trauma hospital, a level two trauma hospital, also um, um, a neuro trauma ICU in Singapore, the National Neuroscience Institute and Tantok Seng Hospital. So this is going to be a, 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 a good opportunity to, to all of you because you don't see this type of um, a lecture and also you don't see this uh, type of in your books, like the Egan of Fundamental. This is very, very advanced airway care. And then I um, usually give this lecture for the doctors and, and uh, artist student in, in Lone Star College when I was a, a clinical instructor. And also this is part of the, the ACLS, which I give to the doctors and also the critical care nursing program. So you will watch and learn all the different advanced airway. Remember, if you are in level two trauma hospital, it's very, very advanced. So it means that we, uh, we have a complete team of neurosurgeon, uh, uh, orthopedic surgeon, neurotrauma surgeon, and a team of critical care nurses and respiratory therapy. So remember, the RT plays an important part of the, the trauma team. So if there's a trauma activation, um, the, the EMT, when they call 911 in the field, the EMT will relate to the uh, to us in the ER. It's a basic uh, info about the 29 years old, ejected, head-on collision, head injury, something like that. So you are preparing yourself. You need to be in five minutes time in the emergency room to wait for this patient. So we work as a team. So this time, all this type of all advanced airway management are very useful. Okay, as a respiratory therapist, we must be familiar with the different airway devices and equipment used in, in OR, ER, and used by EMS and life flight. And uh, remember, not all hospitals are equipped with this type of equipment. That's why I'm going to show it to you. And also, uh, you don't see this in regular intensive care units. So this is a time for opportunity to, to learn about all the equipment. And, and always remember that not all intubation are easy. So we will, uh, I will teach you on how to uh, deal with them. Now, the difficult intubation, there are several reasons why uh, patient has a difficult intubation. Not all. That's why as part of the intubation team in trauma, you deal with many, many uh, cases in ER, also in ICU, you know, from... Um, from head trauma, head and neck trauma, and many more. First is the jaw and neck immobility. A very good example of this one is the short neck. And anything with jaw trauma, it could be from a, a head-on collision, a fractured jaw, or anything injury related to the vehicular accident. So this type, you cannot do the head tilt chin lift maneuver. So gonna be a challenging. So in case like this, you should know or assist in uh, in, in intubation, deformity of the face and neck, which is uh, uh, common in uh, facial injury too, whether it's industrial accident or uh, uh, vehicular or uh, uh, any uh, 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 drowning too. We have some lots of drowning with so many injuries. So you should know how to deal with this type of um, uh, cases and you know how to intubate and in dealing with this. Okay, this is very common. You see this all the time in, in ER and ICU. It doesn't mean when you open the airway, it's clean. No, it's a lot of, you know, uh, vomit. You see a lot of uh, uh, pouring material. Like sometimes I saw a, um, a, uh, a banana, cornflakes, everything. It's messy. So you need to be ready how to remove them. And then uh, the, the most common tarp, but part of difficult intubation is this one, is the inability to visualize the uvula with the mouth opening, suggesting airway obstruction. 
So this is what they call the anti the the you uh, is the what they call anterior, you know. In uh, it's very and when you hear them very anterior, it means it's uh, located upward, which you cannot see or visualize by uh, direct uh, traditional laryngoscopy, either both by uh, using the Mac or Miller blade. So this is the one you use your uh, video guided laryngoscope. Okay, and um, this one another. I'll show you. Uh, a great example of uh, the the blood that I removed from a uh, this one. So the, the history of this guy is just like a normal NGT insertion in the floor, but after a few minutes got stridor and uh, desaturate, and they rushed this to uh, our ICU. So when I bug, so in other words. Uh, we're ready for intubation. So when I was bag and mask, when I uh, opened the airway, I saw this huge blood, like a jello type. And uh, this is a perfect opportunity to take picture. And then um, this type of blood, you, you cannot remove using your yanker. I need to use the McGill forcep. And you know, you should be familiar with the McGill forcep. This is designed to, to guide the ETT if you are doing nasal intubation. Okay, but I use that because that's the one I can reach and remove that old blood there. So this definitely this uh, the guy have some uh, uh, clotting issue. So so you can see this one is huge clot in the throat. So after removing this one, we tube him, and then after uh, I think overnight ventilation, we extubated him and uh, doing great. Now a lot of uh, RT are. Uh, either uh, private message mentions me uh, regarding intubation policy. Now remember, each hospital they have their own policy in how they will allow the RT for intubation. I work in two hospital here. Um, my full time and my uh, my part time is a my part time is a long term acute care, and uh, we are allowed to intubate. Uh, the same thing during my time in Singapore, I was able to intubate in uh, a surgical ICU and medical ICU. But remember, each hospital, they have their own policy, but these are some of the common. Remember, before you are allowed to intubate, and this should be approved by the critical care committee. You know, there's a regular meeting, very active, being done regularly. Uh, like in Singapore, you know, I remember I was part of the critical care committee and then this, they discussed this thing. And then all the head nurses and the assistant director of nursing, anybody involved in the, the critical care team. Or in other hospital, they have the cold blue team. It, it should be approved by the cold blue team, which is usually an anesthesiology uh, intensivist, pulmonologist and also the team of nurses from uh, different units. So it should be uh, approved uh, upon discussion. And then also, if they already approved that, you need to be trained in operating room for a certain number of hours under the guidance of uh, anesthesiologists. And remember, we have the intubation mannequin. First, you train there. But remember, the mannequin is totally different than, than the live person, you see. Uh, when you open the airway, the mannequin is very stiff. Unlike in OR, these are clean cases. They are NPO. And uh, the, the anesthesiology will guide you step to step what are different techniques in intubation and also how to, in, uh, how to deal with difficult intubation. Now, in our, in our hospital, our only lead RT or supervisor are allowed to intubate. And the same thing, you need to have a certain... Uh, uh, number of intubation before they allow you to make sure that you are competent, both the, the traditional laryngoscope and also the, the glidoscope or the video assisted laryngoscope. So you need to be trained on both uh, type of laryngoscope. So these are the answer of some of the people asking me, are, are they allowed to intubate? Yes, but different policy per hospital. Here in Texas, this is the most common and the same thing in Singapore. Now well, let us proceed to the the different airway. Oh, now this is by the way I forgot to tell you this is a good example of the the certification when uh, back in 1998 when I rotated uh, all our staff in security forces hospital to 
to rotate in OR for a 48 hours intubation training. So you will intubate maybe uh, 10 to 20 uh, patient, and then uh, you get a certification, and then and then uh, uh, hopefully they will allow you to intubate for the cold blue team and, and approved uh, in any cold blue situation. But during that time, I'm initiated this move, but I left. I went to Singapore, and then I think it's, it is stopped. Uh, it's up to the critical care committee uh, whether we are allowed to intubate. But I think it's, they were not allowed to intubate because I stopped from there after my um, my suggestion to to let everybody train in OR for 48 hours. Yeah. Okay, the first type of ETT is what we call the armored ETT. You can see from here, they are wire reinforced. There's coil. There's coil wrapped around inside, okay? This type of ETT are ideal for head and neck surgery. These are also very common for uh, surgery when they do a spinal surgery because you put the patient in prone position and there's no kinking here. And ideally, this is right ETT for our COVID patient because we prone them. And the biggest challenge for our uh, prone COVID patient is kinking of the tube and they are not that flexible compared, uh, the, the traditional ETT is not that flexible com compared to this one. You cannot kink and they're very, very soft. And I will show you the difference between the two of them. Now, this is the first comparison. The top one is the armored ETT and the, the below part is the standard. They all look the same, but when you touch them, the armored ET are softer and it's solid, it's hard to kink. Even you try to squeeze that, it won't kink. And this is a good example when you bend them. Look at their standard ETT. It's kink totally. But look at the armored ETT. It still maintains the patency of the endotracheal tube. Even if you bite them or, uh, you know, uh, apply pressure, it won't kink. So these are mostly commonly used in OR. Uh, but occasionally we receive this one. Uh, after surgery or um, just for overnight ventilation. But you see them occasionally, so the nurses will ask you, what's that? And you have to explain that that's the armored ETT. Very nice ETT for uh, for uh, proning, for uh, COVID. The next one will, will be the what we call double lumen ETT. You don't see this all the time in a, in a ER or... A, and ICU, but occasionally in surgical ICU, you see them. So what happened with this one is uh, a specialized tube. They are designed to isolate the lungs anatomically and physiologically. A tube is used for independent lung ventilation. Remember, to insert this type of uh, ETT is need to be fiber optic guided because you want to make sure, did you see that blue, blue cup in here in the tube? That's what we call the, the bronchial tube, lumen. And I will show you how it was uh, located. And this is the, the, the cuff, the bronchial cuff, and this is the tracheal cuff. It's a big one, okay? And they supply you a two type of syringe to inflate both sides. And at the end, there's two. One designed for the left ventilator and the right. So just imagine You'll be wondering how they will uh, do lobectomy or remove the tumor from the right lung if the lungs keep on inflating. So this is the answer. So you intubate you with double lumen, they collapse the right lung, they ventilate the left lung, and they do resection on the collapsed lung. So this is the one you use for that. And this is the, the actual position. I use a DOAI using my uh, leftover tube from the guard from gardening is a transparent uh, tubing in a punctured hole and put it in a board you see this one the blue this is the bronchial tube okay and this is need to be situated situated or located with the proper fiber octave bronchoscope and you inflate that one using the blue uh, balloon you see this one that will inflate now, there's another cuff here, the tracheal cuff, which is to prevent 
the leak going to your upper airway. Okay? Now, you can see there's a small hole here that's going to be ventilating the left side of the lung. Left and right side. And at the end, it divides into two. You see the color-coded blue here? That's designed for ventilating the right mainstem bronchus. Okay? And the left. And at the end of the day, if the doctor said you can collapse this one, we can make it like a, a regular ETT. What will happen is I will collapse this, this balloon, this cuff, and then there's an adapter here which join together to become a one, one adapter for the ventilator to ventilate using uh, a one ventilator only. Okay? So this is a, what we call the double lumen ETT. You don't see this all the time, but occasionally you will encounter this in surgical ICU. The anesthesiologist said we will extubate in the morning, but just keep them on this type of uh, ETT. And you'll be wondering, whoa, what's this? And then the nurses are also not familiar with this type. Okay? The next type of ETT is what we call the ray, ray oral ETT. You see, it's curved. Okay, it's when you open the package, it's already this uh, type of curvature. Okay, this is used in surgery to facilitate directing tubes away from the surgical side, commonly used in ENT or facial surgery. So, when you intubate orally, instead of the ETT is going straight, which uh, will bother the surgeon if they're doing uh, eye surgery or nasal surgery, so it's going downward to facilitate for the surgeon to work on that type of uh, operation. Okay? You see that? Oral, oral, ray ETT. This one is going on that side. So you facilitate a procedure on the eyes and also to the nose or facial surgery. RAA, ray, ray oral ETT. Commonly used in OR. Uh, occasionally, you see them in ICU if they cannot extubate just for uh, overnight ventilation. The next one is the same thing, ray nasal ETT. So, in, it is also used in surgery to facilitate directing tubes away from the surgical side. It's often used in oral or mandibular surgery or maxillofacial surgery. So, what happened, this is uh, done nasally. So you have to you have a, uh, an area for the surgeon to do oral oral surgery with, without obstructing his view. So this is going to the nose, okay, like that. And so I get a wide space for the oral surgeon, okay. Same thing. Occasionally you see this in surgical ICU. Yeah, the, the anesthesiology will tell them uh, we will just uh, overnight ventilation. You keep that ETT and we will actuate early in the morning, and you'll be wondering what's that. The hardest part here is when you suction, okay? Imagine that, how you pass your your small uh, suction catheter here. All right, this is one of my favorite uh, ETT. You don't see this all the time in your uh, regular ICU. It's also never used in uh, OR. These are commonly used in, uh, in the field, used by EMT and Life Flight also known as king tube the uh, the the the, mud, the wonder of this ETT is you can insert this blindly through the oropharynx into the hypopharynx to create an airway these are used for difficult intubation they use this in life life if you are uh, transferring a patient in a helicopter and then and there's a limited space in uh, in the helicopter and uh, you cannot apply your sniffing position or your jaw thrust maneuver. Same thing in a uh, in a, in vehicular trauma where the patient is still inside the, the vehicle and you cannot retreat them. And the patient has head injury, neck and spinal, and you cannot open the airway with a regular head to chin lip or jaw thrust maneuver. This is the best ETT for that. You don't need a laryngoscope to insert this. We just open the airway, you push until it stops. Now remember, this line is there's a hole. 80% when you insert this one goes to esophagus. So this balloon, when you inflate all this uh, 60 cc, will inflate both. So this one will block your gastric content so to prevent backflowing and cause aspiration. This one is the tracheal cap. 
which is to prevent leaking going to the upper airway. When these are both inflated, this, the, the gas coming from your ventilator or your bag and mask goes to the lungs. Okay? And then this is what we call the uh, 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 supraglottic type of airway. It means it's not inserted into the epiglottis. It's, it's, it's above the epiglottis. Okay? Remember this one, King Chu. Very common and used by EMT and life flight and also all this um, uh, limited space and trauma. And I will show you the position of this one. Okay? See, and this is the lateral view when you insert this. Same thing. You don't need a laryngoscope to open this. Just open the airway, push it in. It goes directly to the esophagus. You inflate the 66 syringe, inflate both. This is the esophageal balloon to, to block the gastric content so it won't cause aspiration. And also you have your, your uh, 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 the upper airway, uh, the tracheal cap, so the gas won't escape so you can ventilate and then this is smaller here, a hole that will go to your lungs, okay? You see that? This is the king tube. Very interesting and I like it. Now, the next one is what we call the laryng laryngeal mass um, uh, airway or LMA. It's, this is an old type of uh, 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 airway used mostly in OR or, you know, day surgery, which some people, they don't do intubation. They just do this for short-term uh, surgery. Now, also known as, as LMA, laryngeal mass. It's also just like the, the king tube. They are also called supraglottic airway device. It means you don't insert them inside the epiglottis is just above, okay? And commonly used in OR, the hazard of uh, using this one is it doesn't protect your airway and it will leak sometime. It causes aspiration on the side. Remember, when you open this, the, the sealed container, this one is deflated. So you need to reinflate, to in, reinflate this one to able to seal the epiglottis, Okay. So this is the ring, laryngeal mass airway device, supraglottic. And this is another one. This is also the next generation of LMA, the relative of the LMA or called IGL. So the second generation, same thing is supraglottic, used widely in anesthesia and also all our EMT worldwide. So what happened, it, Compared to the LMA, the LMA, you have to reinflate. You see that? You have to reinflate this one. And then you need to have a, a almost like a 20 cc syringe. When compared to eye gel, no, you don't need to reinflate. This is like a gel type. Okay? You insert this and immediately will go to the epiglottis. It's a superglottic, and then you can ventilate in bag and mask or uh, uh, a ventilator. And available in, I think, either uh, three or four sizes. There's also some pediatric sizes in this one. So this is also used for difficult intubation, wherein you cannot uh, apply the head to chin lip because of the head and neck trauma. Eye gel. Okay, this is another special type. Or PETT. You don't see this all the time, but uh, a, a, uh, a company produced this to, um, to avoid and reduce what we call the VAP, VAP, ventilator associated pneumonia. So they can, you can suction above the cup of the ETT, has a dorsal port above the cup designed to suction secretion above the sub subglottic area. So you can see here, this is a small hole, so it's a small hole, multiple hole. So what happened here, when you see this patient, which is uh, the nurses are not familiar, there's two connectors, one to inflate your cup, and there's another extra here. So the nurses are not familiar about this type of ETT, so definitely they will ask you. So I explained to them. So this is designed for suctioning. You use your tigon tubing here, your suction catheter, and anything secretion accumulated above the cup will be suctioned instead of going down or seeping downward here with cause pneumonia. So you can suction this one here above, above the cup. But the, the downfall of this one is they're only good for a few, few hours. 
because after a few days, the secretion are become thick and it's like a super glue. When you suction, it won't suction here. So it's stuck. You cannot. So, so that's why some of the hospitals that they use this. Occasionally you can. Now we go to the other accessory which we use for difficult intubation. This is what we call the bougie. Uh, used all the time in, in uh, OR and anesthesiology use this all the time for difficult intubation. Uh, ETT introducer or it called uh, intubation catheter. It is important for the clinician performing intubation and having epiglottitis only view on the first attempt. And remember, the tip of this uh, bougie is curved and the other one is straight. When you are assisting the anesthesiology or the pulmonologist, this is the one you give to them and this is the one you insert in the epiglottis, not the straight one, the curved one, okay? And I will show you here. So these are the different types of uh, uh, guide wire, okay? The first one is the commonly used J shape used for a glidoscope, okay? And they're very steep and hard to, and uh, they're already shaped like J shape because for difficult intubation, okay? The second one is the stylet. This is the standard uh, flexible that we use in, uh, in our regular ETT or regular intubation. And you can form your, uh, your ETT. The next one is the elastic bougie. As I told you, it's curved at the end. This is the one you insert in the mouth going to the epiglottis. And this is the position of the bougie. So when you open the airway using your uh, McGill forcep, and this is where you put the bougie there. You see the curved one? The straight on top, the curved going down. Okay? So this is very important if you're assisting too because the doctor will be relying on you as a team when you, as, you know, when they ask you, give me the bougie and you put on this position and insert it like that. Now, another extra is what's the position of your tracheostomy? People... Uh, ask me all the time is because uh, occasionally if I'm assigned in ER, I receive a lot of trach patients from nursing home and trach patients from, from home, whether on ventilator or just uh, a room air with an HME. So I use my uh, uh, DIY, same thing in my garage. So, so you can visualize so the left and the right men's stem bronchus. And this is how our trach position. There's a cup. Occasionally, if I'm assigned in ER, I change the tray. You know, if they are uh, out, maybe they cough it out or the cup is busted, need to be changed. The RT are the one changing the tray tube. Either I, from a cuff, uh, from uncuff to cuff because I need to ventilate them. There's a proper technique, which I will show you later on. Now, this is the one we use for video laryngoscopy or the glidoscope. This is the, the first model we got, but we purchased another one, which uh, a bigger screen. And the same thing is a stand alone. See, there's a, uh, uh, like an IB pole connected. Uh, these are uh, uh, commonly in ER, ICU, in OR. So this is a time by use for difficult intubation. The price of this uh, glidoscope is around, uh, I think, 10,000 US dollar. The, 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 what they call this, the, the blade is disposable. We can also record, take picture of everything during intubation here. And everybody can see uh, the, the anesthesiology, you, and also the nurses. So you can see for educational purposes too. But now it's bigger screen. Now, this is the one we use for uh, code blue in case for difficult intubation because those the the glidoscope with the stand is only for ICU, OR, and ER. So in case we need a uh, an extra help for difficult intubation in the the floor, this is the one we use. The same thing is a glidoscope, which is but is rechargeable, battery operated, and this one is a disposable uh, disposable blade. Okay, this one costs I think the whole unit costs two thousand dollars. And I think the blade disposable costs maybe a consumable around $20 to $50 each. Okay, easy to maintain is throw this one, you clean this one, and you, you recharge. Now, before we go to the troubleshooting, 
I want to show you the parts of the ATT which all RT should be familiar with. Okay? So this is the Bible tip which is very important when you do x-ray. You see this one if it, it is uh, you are in the right or uh, right main stem or left main stem or you're just above the carina. You see the Marpy eye. And this is your cup. Vocal cord guide. You see that? When you intubate the patient, this is the, you can see this if you pass this one you're almost uh, in a proper position. That's why vocal cord guide. When you insert it, you need to pass the vocal cord and exactly you're going to be 2 to 3 cm above the carina. Okay? And then this is the pilot balloon. This is the pilot line. PVC tubing. This is our 14 to 15 millimeter adapter, which fits exactly on your manual resuscitator or ventilator connector. Okay? So very important, you have to know how to troubleshoot what happened if this is if this uh, cup is busted. What happened is the pilot line is cut or the pilot balloon is leaking. Now I will show you some troubleshooting technique. You don't see this in your books. Now this is a good example which I encounter. I think I was in Saudi Arabia, two three in the morning. It's an ARDS, fifteen pip high FiO two, such barely reach ninety percent. And the nurse was trimming the beard and accidentally cut the pilot line. Now we're in big trouble. They call me, Benji, the patient is saturate very fast. And the worst thing when we call the anesthesia, anesthesiologist is in OR with a, a neuro, neuro trauma patient ongoing. So what you do? You extubate? Uh-uh. If you extubate this patient, the patient will die. And you cannot bug. You bug at 15... 15 uh, uh, PIP, high FIO2, and lung compliance is decreased. This patient will not survive. Okay, so what did I do during that time? So in the quick, quick, quick thinking decision making, I used a uh, gauge 18 uh, blunt needle. So I inserted that one, and I was able to reinflate and maintain the saturation around 90% while waiting for the anesthesiology to come for extra help. I cannot intubate this patient, okay? So, so after the patient, after the anesthesiology arrived in the ICU, this is what he did. He asked the bougie, and you see the, the curb, curb type, we insert it in, put the, remove the old one, the old ETT. See, this is another one, what we call the, uh, another type of uh, uh, ETT uh, introducer, or I think they call this Floba, another brand name, but there's a connect it is longer than the Buji, and you have a connector here. Both works the same thing. The Buji and this one, you insert it, and you remove the old busted ETT, and get the new one, and you just glide it in, and you are able to uh, resume ventilation. Now, this is the tip. The tip of the other ETT introducer, you see that one? The tip is designed for oxygen. You can connect oxygen here. And also at the same time, you can put an emergency, emergency drug like, like uh, uh, epinephrine if you don't have any line in a cold blue situation. Okay, but very seldom happen. But I use this for delivering oxygen. Your oxygen tubing fits here while you are waiting for help or some equipment before intubation. Okay, you can use also the the, the bougie in uh, as a guide wire for your uh, uh, trach, uh, which is very common. I use this in ER if the patient is using a cuff an uh, an cuff trach uh, trach tube, and we need to ventilate them using uh, you know the ventilator because they are in distress or they are in pneumonia or other issue. So you cannot ventilate them with an uncap. So I remove this one and, and change it with a cup one and I can connect to the ventilator. Okay. Now, if you don't have the bougie on hand, you can use this technique, which is I used to. I use a regular suction catheter. Remember our regular suction catheter? You know, the common suction that we use for trach, ETT, or oral suctioning, nasal nasotracheal suctioning, what I will do is cut the end. It's soft, so it fits very well. It's not long. Okay, cut this end and 
I can guide, use it as a guide wire and insert the new calf trach tube. And I think that's all. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, uh, Sir Benji, for that uh, very informative um, lecture. Sorry, let me just restart my camera here. Oh, sorry, some technical problem there. <laughs> no worries. Um, we're still here. Thank you, Sir Benji, for that uh, very in that and uh, very informative uh, airway management um, mm -hmm. presentation. Um, if our audience have any questions, please. Um, Sorry, type them in the chat box in our YouTube live um, and um, we can answer some questions for you. Um, yeah, so, you know, I've on your presentation, there's a lot of things that I think, you know, as they call it, you know, uh, a lot of things that um, we can MacGyver, right? Like the mm -hmm. like the yep. suction catheter, you know, as that, a guide I use that. for mm -hmm. trach tube. I've never yep. seen that before. Yes, but I used that. That's, uh -huh. Yeah, that's my original. Because remember, yeah. if, you're, if you're an ER, you ask the bougie, most of them are uh, in their storage or uh, mm. in, in OR. You have asked them, get this one. But the only one is very easy to access is our regular suction catheter. And they are very soft and they are designed for suctioning. And I use that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, you know, again, as you mentioned earlier, if you're in a critical uh, situation, you have to critically yep. think and act very fast because, again, mm -hmm. we're dealing with, you know, emergent situation. That's very mm -hmm. good. And one more thing while we're waiting for some uh, questions here. The armored ET tube, I have mm -hmm. not seen them before. Yep. I have not heard from them, but those are going to be you know, great um, ET tube for the prone COVID patients, you know? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, exactly. And, then, you know, the problem we encounter, we have a lot of patient and proning is, you know, when you turn the patient head and neck like that, mm -hmm. it, it, it kinks. It's very hard mm -hmm. to suction. And then uh, this is the ideal ETT, the armored ETT, and very soft, oh, easy to maneuver. And uh, it's very impressive. And remember, Mike, all this, uh, all this uh, airway that I showed to you, I have hands on. It's in my, it's here, and I usually uh, show and tell. And these are all my original. I didn't uh, get that picture from online. And this right. is my actual collection, yeah. out of the collection of uh, airways. Yeah, I was about to mention that because these pictures are very, you know, they're very original. And it yeah, this is like mine. Yeah. Them. Yeah. So yeah, you don't see this in your Egan's fundamental of respiratory or <laughs> article. You don't see this one. Yeah, that's great. And uh, um, I don't think we have any questions from our live audience. Uh, I would like uh, to thank you, Mr. Uh, Benji, for um, mm -hmm. joining us today. Can you, thank you. For, thank you for, um, sorry, let me fix my computer real quick here. Uh, So yeah, thank you for joining us here uh, today and we truly appreciate you um, um, sharing your knowledge and expertise to all of us. And mm -hmm. again, it's, you know, very original, not coming from a textbook and all these mm -hmm. pictures are, you know, great help for all of us. Even for those, I believe, you know, experienced respiratory therapists, mm -hmm. you know, they would learn a lot from what you have presented to us and they can use it on their everyday practice. Mm -hmm. So... Thank you. Um, if you have a, uh, any more parting words for us, sir, last thoughts before um, we let you go for tonight. Oh, yeah. Okay. So just like what tell all the artists, students, you know, just study hard, work very, very hard, you know, for your parents too. And then also um, another thing uh, other people maybe not thinking is uh, thinking ahead of time. After graduation, what's your plan? After graduation, what's your plan? What's your plan? You're planning to do OJT, sales? Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be uh, an actual clinical practice? You know, things like that. Because 
Uh, after graduation, I have clear in my mind, I want to work immediately. I don't care if it's exhausting and multiple jobs. So it's clear in my mind and I, I need to be ahead of, ahead of my peers, ahead of, you know, ahead of, ahead of time, every, everything. So, so also, you know, with the help of your parents, you know, they will guide you and your colleagues too. So that's why I don't waste time. At the age of 21, I was already in the Middle East and the youngest one. And, and that's how my career begins and then uh, I move forward. So go ahead and be productive and um, study hard. Good luck to the... If, another thing for the people who failed the exam, no problem. Retake it again. Study hard and retake. It's not end of the world. You know, it's not end of the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Benji Aglim. We mm -hmm. truly appreciate you. And also, I would like to mention to our audience, um, you know, as um been a long time that we were thinking of this as a group. And uh, Mr. Benji Aglim, you know, have reminded us and said that, hey, why don't we do a webinar series for our fellow respiratory therapists? And um, sure enough, <laughs> you know, I had more time. You know, we were busy with COVID-19 care and you know, we're just busy with our everyday lives. And, you know, it was kind of a fortunate and unfortunate uh, instance for me that I was uh, on medical leave. So I did have time to, um, you know, research about doing this YouTube live and creating this. So now here we are and we thank you for your time. And hopefully we can uh, invite you again soon, sir. So, so you know, to, um, you know, share some more knowledge and expertise in the field of respiratory care. Yeah, anytime, Michael. And remember, thank you so much for your initiative. Mm -hmm. And remember, this is for us. This is for the student, you know, the all the RT practitioner right now and also the future RT, okay? Remember, sharing is caring. Yeah. You know, we need to, to transfer these years of experience to other people, you know? Mm -hmm. Who will help? We'll help each other. Nobody will help you. Right. Okay. Uh Thank you. Maraming salamat po, Sir Benji. Uh, uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank All you. All right. Good night and uh, have a nice day. Good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. So, um, again, that's uh, Mr. Uh, Benji Agleem uh, from Conroe, uh, Texas, USA. Um Thank you for your time. Thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for your expertise. And we thank you for uh, being our second uh, uh, guest for our show tonight. So, um, again, thank you for our audience that have joined us today. This uh, um, episode will be uploaded into our YouTube channel on two different parts. I mean, it will be uploaded as a whole. And it will be also trimmed for the part one would be Q&A. And then the part two will be the actual presentation of Mr. Benji Agleem. So uh, shout out to our audience um, and have comment, uh, left a comment on our chat box. Ms. She Francisco and Ms. Finn Balte again. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, and here we go again. Now I do have a question. Um, usually... Uh, uh, you know, we're just starting and um, I just want to be a little, you know, just have a little fun and um, share some, you know, some to our audience and encourage uh, audience for us. So uh, last time we gave uh, 1,000 pesos, we're about 23, $25, depending on the exchange rate. Um, but hopefully uh, soon we can increase that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, I think the question would be... Um, if you can uh, answer this question on our chat box, would be, um, what kind of advanced airway would you? Uh, it's typically used in a um, um, pre-hospital setting. Um, so if the EM, EMS or emergent medical services are trying to put an advanced airway, but they're they're unable to, what kind of uh, do you think an advanced airway you can place? Um, if uh, endotracheal tube is not possible on the field. What do you guys think is that airway called? And um, you guys can free to, uh, um, and uh, type in to our chat box and we will wait for an answer. So it's an advanced airway that's typically used pre-hospital setting if a, or uh, even an operating room, if a, uh, 
a uh, endotracheal tube is not possible? Might kind of be a difficult question, but that's one of the presentation. Um, uh, it was mentioned by Mr. Benji Aglim, and he had shown us some pictures. Uh, so that's it. Um, so that's our question for today. Um, anyway, um, thank you again for joining us today on our second episode of Ang Artimo. I would like to invite everyone, uh, um, our colleagues, our friends in the field, and our audience, and there's aspiring respiratory therapists, to join us on our third episode next week uh, with Mr. Leonard Higoy from um, Alberta, Canada. Um, he will be uh, presenting us um, MDIs with spacer versus nebulizer. That will be his presentation next week. So again, Mr. Leonard Higoy from Alberta, Canada would be our third speaker or third guest for our third episode on Ang Artimo. Okay? So, good morning everyone, uh, Middle East, uh, Dubai, Singapore, Philippines. Uh, good morning to you all and good afternoon, I think, I guess, for some countries. And then good evening here uh, for us in the western uh, side of the, the, the world. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, stay strong. Laban lungs. You know, mga party peeps. Let's keep um, saving lives uh, one breath at a time. Uh, I do thank you and appreciate you. And also, again, if you are, just a reminder, if you are a bachelor's or if you are a respiratory therapy program in the Philippines, BSRT, and if you want to promote your school or your program in our show, please do message me on our Filipino Association of Respiratory Therapists International page or party, or you can find me on Facebook and message me personally at Michael Di Peralta, or please email me at angartimo at Ang po at gmail.com. Again, that's ang po at gmail.com. So you can send me a message and we can showcase your program or I mean your respiratory therapy program here on our show so we can encourage more enrollees and encourage more uh, respiratory, aspiring respiratory therapists to join our field. Okay? So good night. Um, thank you for watching us. And please, if you have just recently joined us and have not seen the whole show, um, in 30 minutes or so, uh, I will be uploading the two parts portion for the question and answer and the actual presentation of Mr. Benji Gleam. Okay, stay, stay safe, stay strong mga kabaga, and always stay well. And see you guys on the next episode.